everyone is destined by Christ to rise I have cried though walking with God let me tell you the truth if anybody tells you walking with God is just full of laughter you are joking it's not the God of the Bible every generation will not be confused there is a generation that will get this thing said the compressed of the from that day the creative dimension of the prophetic say rest on me rest on me rest on me chapter 32 and verse 15 we'll just pray this song and then we'll be seated until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness be a fruitful field and a fruitful field be counted for a forest can you go ahead take the next five minutes to pray this song all of the graces that you heard them mention turn it into prayer go ahead let it rest on me indeed the power to prosper your wisdom the power for signs and wonders someone is praying the grace called favor parato shabrande gebereto sias skate palato shabrande gebereto skabredish someone pray until the spirit be poured upon us from on high when the grace is upon of your life, it speaks instantly and loudly. Shada bakato shabranda geberetos, krate gabalata shabranda gebelekatos. Someone is crying for the power to prosper, the antidote for lack, want, begging, borrowing. Are you praying? The power for the supernatural, commanding signs and wonders. Pray for the grace called favor. Define your possibilities in this wicked selfish bedeviled world let favor single you out turn you to a sign and a wonder for in jesus mighty name we pray in jesus mighty name we pray I want you to listen to this before you sit down. The ignorant believer will always remain a defeated believer. Being a believer notwithstanding, the ignorant believer will always remain a defeated believer. The ignorant believer will always remain a defeated believer. Hosea 4 and verse 6 says, My people... Even though they are my people, they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. The blessing that we have received in this Zoe life is accessed experientially by knowledge. So just because you have received the life of God does not mean you will have the experience of that life, not without knowledge. Hallelujah. We are still going to pray one more prayer. Please lay your hands on your head and cry for knowledge. Father, what I need to know tonight, as far as my walking in victory, my excelling, my prospering, my walking in signs and wonders is concerned, let it be released upon my life. I am a receiver tonight. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. We'll sing that song one more time. 
while you are praying. Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. And God is able to make all grace. That means grace is dimensional. All grace to abound towards you. Why? That ye always having all sufficiency in all things, not some things, may abound unto every good work it is impossible to abound unto every good work until these various dimensions of graces find expression in your life for instance if you are limited in wisdom that alone will keep you defeated forever if you lack favor you will live a hard life that will plunge you into compromise and decadence the advantage of these graces is that they empower the believer to become an expression of the glory of God indeed. I'm praying for you tonight that every grace that is missing in your life may tonight be the moment where you access it. I say it again, every dimension of grace that is missing, that he that told it has not yet found expression in your life, may this be the night that you will access it in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' name, mighty name we pray please be seated good evening everybody blessings to our global family let's get to work in jesus precious name we pray hallelujah we've been on a series of spiritual vaccination against failure against losses against defeat hallelujah and tonight by the grace of god we'll be having the last dose of that spiritual vaccine from deliverance from calamity then lessons from an overcomer these are a series of teachings they are named different things but they are all survival strategies these are kingdom strategies that help the believer to thrive and to survive. These are end time strategies. If you have missed any of these, please discipline yourself and get these teachings, deliverance from calamity, lessons from an overcomer, and then you listen with all your heart. Are you ready from for tonight's teaching? All right, so tonight um, we're obtaining grace. The focus of the teaching tonight is to find out the mystery behind longevity of impact. We'll be learning tonight why great people fall. We'll be learning tonight why people celebrate victory today and exploits, and then tomorrow they are no more in the scene. Are you ready? The title of the teaching tonight is Ichabod, Obtaining Grace to Last. Ichabod is spelled I C H. A B O D, Ichabod, First Samuel 4. We're reading from verse 1. Help us, Spirit of the Living God, in Jesus' name. 
And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer. And the Philistines pitched in Aphek. It's a long reading, be patient. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines. And they slew the army in the field, about 4,000 men. So Israel is being defeated now. And when the people were coming to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore hath the Lord smitten today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. Verse 4. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from thence the ark of covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the ark of the covenant of God. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. Verse 6. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord was coming to the camp. Uh -huh. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is come into the camp. And they said, Woe to us, for there hath not been such a thing hitherto. Woe to us. Who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines. They're encouraging themselves now. That ye be not servants unto the Hebrews as they have been to you. Quit yourselves like men and fight. So they went on to fight all the same. And the Philistines fought and Israel was smitten. Even though the ark was there, they fled every man to his tent and there was a very great slaughter. For there fell of Israel 30,000 footmen. Verse 11. And the ark of God was taken and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas were slain. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent and with the earth upon his head. And when he came, lo, Eli sat upon the seat by the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it all, all the city cried out, 14. And when Eli heard the noise of crying, he said, what meaneth the noise of this tumult? And the man came in hastily and told Eli, 15. Now Eli was 90 and 8 years old, and his eyes were dim, and he could not see. And the man said to Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today out of the army. And he said, What is there done, my son? He's finding out the information now. And the messenger answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines. And there had been also a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead. And the ark of God is taken. 18. And it came to pass, when he made mention of the ark of God, that Eli fell from off his seat backwards by the side of the gate, and his neck brake, and he died. For he was an old man and heavy, and he had judged Israel 40 years. 19. And his daughter-in-law, Phinehas' wife, was with child, near to be delivered. And when she heard the thing that the ark of God was taken, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and travailed, for her pains came upon her. Verse 20. And about the time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast a son. But she answered, but she answered not, neither did she regard it. 21. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, 
the glory is departed from Israel because the ark of God was taken because her father-in-law and her husband were all dead. Last verse, 22. And she said, the glory is departed <clears throat> from Israel for the ark of God is taken. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. So at this time, the sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, they had become very lawless boys. And then Israel went to war against the Philistines. And about 400,000 of them were defeated. Or 400 or 4,000 really. And then when they were defeated, they said, no, it is because the ark of God is not in our midst. Go and get the ark and bring it in our midst. And they brought the ark thinking it would be the basis for their victory. And even with the ark in their midst, the Bible says 30,000 other people were slaughtered. The ark was taken away from them. And then Hophni and Phinehas were slain. And when Eli heard this, the Bible says he fell and he died. When his daughter-in-law... <clears throat> the now wife of the late Phinehas, when she heard this, even though it was not time, she had to travel and give birth to a child. And the people were encouraging her, don't worry, you've given birth to a son. And she said, no, I will not make it. And she named the child Ichabod. She said, the glory is departed from Israel. The word Ichabod is a Hebrew word. And it means, like you read, the glory has departed or without glory or where is the glory so just like Jabez it was customary for the people in those days to name children after their experiences are we together now yes it is a practice that till today is still strong among Jewish nations they would name children after experiences they would name children after all kinds of things now every believer in Christ has the destiny of ever increasing glory. Let's start from there. Every believer in Christ, you and I in Christ, we all have a destiny of ever increasing glory. Proverbs 4 and verse 18. The Bible says, But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. So more and more is the destiny of every believer in Christ hallelujah Ezekiel 36 and verse 11 Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 11 Ezekiel 36 and 11 I will multiply upon you man and beast and they shall increase and bring fruit and I will settle you after your old estates and then he says I will do better unto you than at your beginning and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So God is committed to ensuring that our experiences are better even at the latter parts of our lives than the beginning. Every believer in Christ has the destiny of ever increasing glory. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 8 tells us that better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. That means in the mind of God and the way God operates, the end of a thing is of more importance, of more value, and of more significance. Better is the end of anything at all than the beginning. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Now, most people are excited when they begin things in life. Begin businesses, begin a home, begin a ministry, begin schooling. Usually, beginning is characterized uh, by so many things. Joy for some. If you're sending your child to school, he's about to start school. Usually, he's rejoicing, not knowing what and what he will face. Sometimes, beginnings start with pain. For instance, the beginning of an individual's life, you may come from a family that may not have any sense, any advantage whatsoever. Beginnings are also characterized in many regards by overconfidence most times you know beginners because there is a sense of overconfidence they believe that they are able to handle life on their own and most times would not listen hallelujah 
But for everyone, usually, your beginning relative to your end starts with ignorance. So we have all of this to characterize beginnings. And it is in God's mind that no matter how an individual begins, that the end of that person's life, the end of that person's destiny becomes glorious. So it's all right to start from any state, whether poverty, whether spiritual laxity, like the dear lady who shared the salvation of her entire family, you can imagine. Hallelujah. So if you were to look at that lady 10 years ago, you probably would see a beginning that was not kingdom, not scripture compliant. But glory to God right now, you see the miracle that God has done. So it is a very powerful thing. Job 8, 7. Let me show you a scripture there. Job 8, 7. It says, though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should. It didn't say would. It means it is supposed to be this way. But whether it happens or not, it's a different explanation altogether. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. When the Bible says a thing should be, it doesn't mean it must be. The moment you see should be, it means that there are conditions. And if those conditions are met and are kept, then that reality becomes your manifestation. Otherwise, it will just remain as prophecy. Unfortunately, our world today is full of very pathetic stories stories of grace to grass as we call it and then full of very inspiring stories stories of grass to grace you find that in ministry you find that in business you find that across nations that once upon a time individuals who were nobodies individuals who had no comeliness individuals who had no there was nothing admirable or desirable about their lives and under certain conditions they began to grow they began to evolve and some of them did it so well that they have now become references across the nations and at the same time the bible is full of people who the chapters of their life started from their points of victory we may not know so much about what happened, but at the time we met them, at the time we knew them, they were people who were celebrities, they were great, and at the end of their lives, all that we see in their lives is a catastrophe, disaster. An example is the man Gehazi. The Bible does not give us any picture about the training process of Gehazi. By the time he's introduced in scripture, he's already serving a great man with potential to even be the next prophet. But at the end of Gehazi's life, we see a man who had become leprous and left for dead. Hallelujah. So what is this factor that makes the end or the latter part of men's life so glorious for some and then for others it becomes an object of shame? There are names today that when you call, unfortunately, People do not want to be associated with it because of the kinds of ugly stories that are about around that name. And there are names that when you call, people will want to be part of it because it represents inspiration. Tonight you must learn how to last, how to remain. Everyone has a right to start. The Bible in fact tells us that in a race, say a marathon, there are several people who are ready to start. Maybe 30, maybe 40, maybe 100. And there are some from the beginning, they know they will not finish. They were only attempting. There were others who hope, well, let's see how it goes. But there were others who were already determined from beginning that we will finish this race. And once the gun is shot on your marks, get set, go. There are people who, they laugh at themselves while they are going because they know they are wasting their own time they don't intend to last. After they circle the field once, twice, on their own, even without being tired, they just say, no, I have to reconsider this. I'm, I'm not, it's not worth it. And then there are others with unbending determination, not smiling. You call them, they don't care. You insult them, they don't care. With that kind of determination, they keep moving until they eventually finish. Hallelujah. And so I want you to pay attention as I share with you why greatness is short-lived. 
I want to show you why great people fall, why great institutions become shadows of themselves. The key is to plant in us through this teaching the power to last. That starting is not enough. Are we together? Yes. Your real stamina is not measured in your ability to start. Your real stamina is measured in your ability to remain. With all due respect, in Nigeria today, I do not know how old the oldest company in Nigeria is. Perhaps maybe one of the banks or maybe some institutions. And there are just a few years. There are structures that don't last because they were not built according to standard. There are corporations and organizations that don't last. In fact, it is said that for most businesses that start, most ventures that start in Nigeria, at least 80% of them die before the end of the first year. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing? That is true for churches. That is true for businesses, schools, and whatever it is. So why is greatness short-lived? Why does greatness suddenly turn to shame? What is the key that governs longevity of impact? Are you ready now? Number one, the first reason why greatness is short-lived in the life of individuals, in the life of ministries, in the life of organizations is pride. Up front, let's get that out of the way. Pride. Pride. Proverbs 16, 18. Behind everything that was once glorious, and it's no longer glorious. Pride had a role to play. The Bible says, pride goeth before destruction. You know what it means? That means anytime you see pride dancing around your corridor, it came with escorts. Destruction and a fall is part of it. Pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 18:12. The first reason why greatness is short-lived in the life of people is pride. It says before destruction, the heart of man is haughty and before honor is humility. You see how they work? Proverbs 29 and verse 23. Proverbs 29 and verse 23. Let's read together. Ready? One to read. A man's pride shall bring him low but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit one more time a man's pride shall bring him low but honor shall uphold the humble what is pride the unashamedness to acknowledge god as the basis for where you are the unashamedness or the uh, what they call it now is it unashamedness the refusal, let me use that expression. The refusal to acknowledge God. That you step in God's way and you want to be at the center of everything. To receive the credit for where you are. As though you were not helped by God. As though you were not helped by men. The refusal to acknowledge God as the reason, the basis, the principal factor for whatever result you have is called pride and my goodness our world today is plagued with men and women who are already disasters going to happen in ministry in business in politics hallelujah the number one factor that sustains the ability to cut short a man's impact, to cut short a man's greatness. Please pay attention. No matter who you are, if you decide to embrace a life of pride, there is no longevity to your impact. You see, let me tell you this. Before a man falls, he always looks like he cannot fall till he falls. Did you hear what I said? Before a man falls, when you see the kind of assumed stability, you would doubt and say it's impossible. There is nobody who cannot go down. Pride. James chapter 4 from verse 6 to 8. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud. Koinonia, let's say this together. One to go. God resisted the proud. One more time. 
I have taught you here that the anointing was supposed to fight anything that is against the will of God. The anointing does not fight what is the will of God. So if God is the one resisting you, there is no amount of impartation that will give you victory. The power of God fights unclean spirits. The power of God fights situations that are inconsistent with the will of God. But if God is now the one fighting you by himself, then you are in trouble. And the Bible says there is such a condition where God can fight a man. Who wins when God fights you? The Bible says, but he giveth grace, not to the Christian, to the humble. So if the Christian is the proud, he will still become a victim of God's wrath, God's power, pride. Hallelujah. I learned this lesson in life. And let me tell you the truth, ladies and gentlemen. It's easier to talk about pride when you don't have anything. It's easier to talk about pride when you are poor, when nobody knows you, when you don't have any anointing, you don't have any influence. In the presence of greatness, you will know how difficult it is to be and to remain humble. Did you hear what I said? In the presence of greatness, there are people who have not done anything, passing comments on people and saying, this one is proud. You don't have anything that should compel pride. That's why. In the presence of pride, you will know why, ne I mean, the presence of greatness. Do you know why Nebuchadnezzar built a 90 feet stature? You think he started like that? He started as an ordinary man, but my goodness, the level of results that he had, there is something called the pride of life. I have taught you that the pride of life is the, the self exaltation that comes on account of obvious results. If you don't have results, you are just proud. Are we together? Which translates to foolishness because there is nothing to be proud about. But there are times where you have results, say results, and your results are loud, your results are clear. At such point, it becomes justifiable to be proud. After all, I have anointing. You can see it. After all, I have favor. You can see it. After all, I have influence. You can see it. After all, you have become Beulah and Hephzibah. You can see it. It is at this state. Listen, when Satan wants to stop you, he starts to stop you at the beginning of your journey. If he fails to stop you at the beginning of the journey, he will rest for a while. You will think you have, you have defeated him, but he's waiting for you at the corridors of greatness. Because something happens to men the moment they become great. Let me repeat myself again, my dear people. Something happens to men. Every man upon the face of the earth, in the presence of greatness, the temptation of pride will always test you. Are we learning pride pride has destroyed preachers pride has destroyed businessmen pride has destroyed captains of industry pride has destroyed people in the academia there are people who made a, a boast of several things they are still begging till today pride you get to a point where you become clear the devil tells you without you this company cannot run Without you, this ministry will not run. Do you know you are the single reason why this family is working? The moment the devil starts making you look like everything fails without you, you already know you are in trouble. And it may be true. Every house is built by some man, but the truth is that God is the builder of all. How do you know that you are suffering from pride when people no longer matter to you? You believe that everybody must bow before you and acknowledge you because of what you are doing, number one. And you believe that everybody is of less importance except you. You are the principal defining factor in that equation of success. Beware. Pride has already got into the corridor. And sometimes pride can come as a sincere communication of acknowledging your value, celebrating your value, Joshua Selman, you are doing so much traveling around the world. Usually you will start by saying, thank you, thank you of God. Very soon you will feel too big to bow. And you say, but, but come to think of it. Oh, this thing, they are not lying. Uh -huh. Are we together? And you know, most times 
there are many people who they don't do the boasting themselves but they have arranged a system that does the boasting for them you are still proud are we together <laughs> ah, may God deliver us from pride oh shout amen oh shout amen this night this night is the night to say amen when you are supposed to say amen because this thing has destroyed people listen I hope you know that that's what brought Lucifer down I will be like the most high I will exalt myself above the stars of God if there is anything for you to fight as a survival strategy ladies and gentlemen as you rise as God lifts you the first thing to check in your life if you want to last is pride pride you can be simple and yet proud I hope you know there is a difference between simplicity there are people who are generally not simple they are very lavish about life but in truth they are humble it's just their disposition there are others who are very simple and very proud then there are those who are still loud and proud altogether listen you have really gotten victory if you have victory over the pride of life there are a few things that when you really conquer you deserve to give yourself a pat at the back one of it oh is not having money in your account believe me if you are able to successfully resist the spirit of pride you have signed in for longevity of impact with all due respect many years ago as many of you may have experienced I remember when God started out with us my goodness it was at a time where there were many preachers there were many people and those days you will see people that you will never believe you would think at the end of one week even the White House will call them and say what kind of anointing do you have I tell you sincerely some of those people with all due respect today they are not they are nowhere to be found because of pride hallelujah there are preachers with all kinds of pride with all due respect and not to insult but just starting out in ministry but my goodness when you hear people talk sometimes you have to hold yourself and say my god what kind of orientation is this i me myself and then you know sometimes as preachers and then of course as great people generally we have diplomatic ways of surrounding people who their assignment is to just sing our praises and then we use this false sense of release well glory be to God but the truth is that there's no glory going to God anywhere humility is discernible humility is feelable when you stand before a humble person you will know you can be confident and yet humble do you know why a humble person is ever conscious of projecting Jesus not self you know that you are walking in humility because the desire to stand in God's way is not even there at all I've told the Lord whatever he will give me that will stop men from seeing him may it never come into my life that that is a useless gift it's a gift that will end up being a burden to you the carrier an extra luggage that is not necessary for your destiny and I'm saying this because while greatness inspires sometimes let's be careful what we copy from great people you must sustain the wisdom to edit in love oh God has made Joshua Selman great be careful the things you copy don't swallow everything hook line and and uh, what they call the other thing are we together now do you know there are people this pride you see sometimes is as a result of a background of failure especially for Africa there are many people who missed greatness in their childhood are we learning there are people who missed an opportunity to be great either they were insulted by parents or they were insulted by in maybe school institutions so naturally the moment you make it that desire to shout it and slap it at the face of everybody unlike your believing or your disbelieving me I have arrived and in case you do not know I have an assignment to make sure I slap it on your face that I'm no longer the version you used to know 
I'm now the rich version of me, the anointed version of me. I'm now the CEO version of me. And sometimes when you live long and access wisdom, you will find out that it's totally unnecessary. The pressure to prove a point and the pressure to let men know you have made it is a sign that you have not really made it. Because can I tell you, success is loud, it is visible, it is clear. When you have made it, it becomes clear. Even a blind man knows that you have made it. Don't play with me. Oh, do you know how rich I am? Does wealth hide? Where do you hide it? Does wisdom hide? Does genuine power hide? Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. If God has made you, he has made you. It's as simple as that. One of the ways to encourage people and to inspire them is to combine humility with your result. It's a beautiful sight to behold that you watch people who are gifted, who are skilled, who are great, but then their lives become so inspiring because they wrap that excellence with humility. This is a prayer that I keep praying for myself even to, till today. There are some prayers you will never graduate from praying. One of it is keep me humble, oh God. Keep me humble. Keep me humble. As men sing your praise, keep me humble. It's the same people who will say shame on him. He has fallen. So when people are clapping for you, during your triumphant entry, I have taught you, beware. Most people are only clapping for themselves through you. Are we together? You want to last? You want to know why great men go down? I tell you the number one reason is pride. Pride pride that when you submit yourself to prayer and say lord every time when men look at me may they see you yes they will acknowledge your hand upon my life but beyond me may they see you may they see your power and may they see your glory may they see your wisdom let it not be all about joshua selman let it not be all about koinonia and you see let me tell you the world that we live we live in now makes you look like a fool the moment you project jesus beyond self they tell you you are a fool the way you gain influence is to shout it once people know and it's true in our world from a secular standpoint when you shout it whether it's true or not there is an attitude you give results that you seem to command respect. There are people who are not 10 years old in their impact, 5 years old in their impact. You celebrate them, you dance around their crowns, and in one year, two years, 10 years perhaps, they've gone. And they're still alive. It is not a good thing. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, yes, your name is to be Adonai. I'm never tired of sharing with you my experience and the Lord told me very clearly son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you this is a condition can I tell you seated here looking at me as sincere people who want to make it for some seated looking at me now as sincere people who have made it to a level and I understand the pressure of wanting, you don't want people to downplay what you stand for. Because we live in a world where there are people who will see the results on your life and still downplay it. And I know sometimes it can be ego stinging. So the pressure to have to prove a point and slap it on people's face that, listen, don't look down on me. I am a millionaire. I am a billionaire. I'm an anointed person. I'm the CEO. But I'm telling you from the lens of wisdom, it is unnecessary. Your passion to remain must exceed your passion to be known. Your passion to remain, to last, must exceed your passion to be known. Write it down, please. Your passion to remain must exceed by far your passion to be known. If your passion to be known becomes greater than your passion to last, you will be known 
but you will not last. Please someone write this both in your heart and then on whatever writing material you're using. Your passion to last, your passion to remain must by it must exceed by far your passion to be known. A man can be known and yet not last. But it is difficult to be long within a system and yet not known. Is someone learning? Why greatness is short-lived? Why glory suddenly turns to shame? Why longevity does not happen for many people? Reason number one, pride. What is the solution? In all your ways, acknowledge him. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 6. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, in all your results, acknowledge him. When self wants to use your results to promote, to shout it, remember that I am here because of him. The nations can think what they want to think. They can say what they want to say. But my knees will never be tired of going on the ground to say thank you. No matter how high you rise. Hallelujah. Every time I thank God for this ministry, I thank God for my life, I say it again and again. Lord, may I never become an idol to a generation such that they forget you to remember me. No. It's a bad bargain. Remember our discussion, previous discussions? I'd rather be forgotten, but if I can make Jesus known, honored, worshipped, respected, at the expense of my being known, it was a good baguette. And don't think I'm just talking because I'm here on stage preaching. No. Pride. Run away from pride. Run away from pride. If it is at work in your life right now, bind it. Cast it. Get it out of your destiny. And say in the name of Jesus, I desire to last. Make up your mind that I will not be the kind of person whose story will be used tomorrow to encourage someone. To say don't be like this person do you know it is better to never rise than to get to a point where your name is written as a memorial a lesson to encourage people anytime they want to use somebody today every time we talk about in the bible we want to warn young men to last the individual we use is samson do you know the many great things that samson did but simply because of the end of his life Everybody forgets that he tore a lion, that he did all of these things. Can I tell you, when you go down, you will be surprised how people will forget all that you did when you were up. Hear what I'm telling you? When you go down, it doesn't matter what you were doing while you were up. It will take the mercy of God for men to remember your exploits when you are down. Ichabod. We are obtaining grace to last. Obtaining grace to remain. Number one, pride. Let's go to number two. Is God speaking to someone? The second reason why greatness is short-lived in the life of many is an arrival mentality. Arrival mentality. The inability to continue learning the inability to continue improving. 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 2. Arrival mentality. What is there to know again? What is there to learn again? What is there to pray about again? I have received the highest award. Do you know that it is often said that for most graduates, as soon as they graduate, their mental capacity starts declining. Because the pressure to learn is no longer there. And they literally stop growing mentally. If any man think that he knoweth anything, the Bible says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. You really know real champions because they always carry an unassuming personality, ever open to learn. The man is a professor, but he's listening to you. And even though what you are saying may not make sense, he's still listening with an open heart. One of the ways you know great people who will last is their passion to keep learning. They learn from the great. They learn from the small. They learn from colleagues. 
they learn from superiors, they learn from subordinates, they remain, they, they are students for life. The school of wisdom is a school where you never graduate, you are only admitted. The day you graduate, you graduate into failure. Arrival mentality. The level of light, ladies and gentlemen, that you need to excel in life and destiny, I submit to you by the integrity of scripture, there are very few people who have accessed that level of light. I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few people who have excelled notably in their fields of endeavor. And sometimes you will be amazed at the level of intellectual investment they have made and that they keep making. Whether it's in sports, whether it's in music, whether it's in ministry, you know, and so on and so forth. Sometimes when I'm studying, I get these very sincere text messages from people. Oh, Apostle, thank you for transforming us and doing this. And then I just look at it and, and I smile. I'm grateful on one hand. And then I just look at my Bible face forward and I continue reading. Because I have taught you, nobody claps for you twice for doing the same thing. Once you receive the applause for a level of result, that is it. If you don't grow, you will not receive any applause again. Arrival mentality. Yesterday's excellence will always be tomorrow's mediocrity. Yesterday's excellence will always be tomorrow's mediocrity. Once upon a time, owning a typewriter was a breakthrough. If you own a typewriter, it was proof that you had made it. But today you can pack typewriters and give someone. And the person will insult you and return it back to you. How about Nokia 3310? If I package it and give it to you today, I say with love from me. You will accept, I tell you, it's a prophetic message that you will start hearing God. Otherwise, you most likely may be angry. Apostle, you mean, did I offend you? Why will you give me this? But once upon a time, it was a people stole to get it. People lied to get it. Yesterday's excellence will always be tomorrow's mediocrity. Or today's excellence, in fact. So you need to be careful that you got an award yesterday does not mean you will get an award tomorrow. Our world is full of people who live in their yesterday. Their arrival mentality kept them there while the world was moving forward. And when you talk, they start giving you stories of yesteryears. I once was the most brilliant person. Are you now? I once was the most intelligent person. Are you now? Those days, I was the one who interpreted for T.L. Osborne. What happened to you now? Celebrating yesterday at the expense of the impact and the exploits of today is a disaster. Your yesterday should never be better than your today. If I give you stories only of yesterday, as though God is not working today, something is wrong. The Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it yesterday, where did you keep him that your result is no longer happening again? I used to pray for the sick yesterday. Thank God, but what is happening now? There are still sick people today. I used to teach yesterday. Ah, Job said, oh, that I was in the days of my youth when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. Can I tell you, may you never lack testimonies that the only thing you have is yesterday's result. I'm saying it again. May you never lack testimonies that you cannot tell people what God is doing in and through your life today. The only thing you have to say are the things that happened yesterday. I was rich. I was anointed. I was blessed. I was serious. No. Arrival mentality. Champions never arrive. They are aware that there is always more. You see and know the character of a champion by their passion to know more. I am I'm passionate about knowing the things and the areas of my ignorance. And when I find an area that I don't know anything about, I don't spare. I don't pity myself because of fatigue. I must drive that ignorance as soon as possible. There is something we call in our world a local champion mentality. Have you heard that kind of thing? Where in a small group of mediocres, you are the highest. 
perhaps the wisest, perhaps the most enlightened. And this cancer of local champion mentality has destroyed preachers, destroyed business people, destroyed great people. Arrival mentality. Oh, turn to the book of this and the man is watching. What? I already know it, I'm sure. With this way he's going with this revelation, he must talk about first call. You just watch and see. The person who is talking has never healed anybody. Nobody knows you. No influence, no power, no grace. You are failed in almost every area of your life. And mostly those who fail are the ones who are the commentators of destiny. They can comment. They can comment. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Have you seen a group of billionaires or millionaires sitting together? And with all due respect, someone who just shows up in their midst and sits down there and they are asking somebody a question that this our man has no idea about. And he will not let the people who have results answer. While they are talking, he said, well, uh, I don't agree with that exactly. What are you saying? What have you had? <laughs> you, you see how people disgrace themselves in destiny? People are talking about the anointing. And someone who has no understanding of the dynamics of the anointing is editing and complaining and say, well, it's not exactly like that. <laughs> and then those who really have the anointing are saying, okay, we're listening. And you are just saying rubbish and confusing yourself and making a fool out of your destiny. Then when it is time to make it happen, usually they step back. May you never be ashamed. Say amen. May you never be ashamed. Amen. I rebuke from your life an arrival mentality. Amen. Listen, always have the heart of a learner. I'm teaching you how to last. Who would imagine that the word incarnate, the logos of God at age 12 will humble himself and go to the temple to learn what? From people he created? And without him was not anything made that was made. But when he became a man by himself, he went to the temple. I'm sure he would sit down there. And then the Pharisees would be teaching him. There was this one that appeared to Moses. And you'll be saying, wow, tell me more about it. So when the light appeared, he said, I am that I am. And the I am himself is listening and nodding his head. What humility is greater than that? If God can sit down to learn as a man, anybody that refuses to sit down and learn, you have pegged your potential for growth. Hallelujah. Champions learn. They learn all the time. They learn with their hearts opened. They learn with their hearts opened. You know that the, a man is going to last in life and destiny because of their passion to learn. Hallelujah. One day, someone gave me a book. Not, not, I think maybe just, I don't know if it's a, I think it's some lady wrote one book and just put it as a gift among the gifts they gave me. And, and I opened it and looked at the book. And to be honest with you, it was something I didn't seem to pay attention to, but the topic caught my attention. And I just said, wow, this is interesting. Turned to the back, read about the person. And I just opened just one small chapter and read just one line. And I was so blessed, so blessed by what that lady, I just read that part alone and then I kept it, but I was blessed. I remember one time, I think I was looking for a particular, I was just researching on a particular topic, true story. And then I saw a, a video, maybe like five, 10 minutes on YouTube. I don't even know the person. And the entire, I'm not sure that it was up to maybe 30 or 40, what do you call that thing? Whether likes or follows. You know, the people listening to him. And then I listened to what the gentleman was saying. And my God, it was five minutes of profound wisdom. 
Yet nobody was listening. I said, this gentleman now may have known about me and never know that I am part of those who have benefited from him. I'm sure he'll be praying and say, oh God, let me meet this man one day. Not knowing that the man you are praying to meet listened to your five minutes video and was blessed by it. Some of you will never admit it. That you are a big man and say, no, I learned from a little child. Ah, that is a... That is a, an, a sting to your ego. You say, no, I received it from heaven. <laughs> what is there to say you just learned? Does it take away your anointing? Where did you learn how to cook this nice meal? You know, I have my thing with God. Tell the truth. <laughs> there is nothing to be embarrassed about, ladies and gentlemen. I went to someone's house and saw, you may say, I saw them cook rice in a way I've never known. I asked a polite question. They taught me. Period. Glory be to God. Honor to the saints. What is the lie about? An unnecessary expensive lie. Say amen. amen. Arrival mentality. You must fight it. You must fight it. It is the cancer of great men. It is easy to study when you have not become. It is easy to study when men do not know you. But when you get to a point where your results are clear and obvious, can you sit down and listen to someone you trained and learn from him? It is one of the biggest disasters of men of God. If I'm not preaching and I sit down, there are times I go to preach in meetings and perhaps there might be a number of preachers, some preaching before me and after me. If I have the time, it doesn't matter whether I train the person, whether we are colleagues, whether it's a father, it doesn't matter. Once the word of God is coming or any platform to dispense wisdom, I listen to it carefully. If there's nothing I can learn, glory be to God. At least I did not waste my time. Are we learning? An arrival mentality. When you find what you do not know, humble yourself and learn. Humble yourself and learn. Humble yourself and learn. Reject an arrival mentality so that the word Ichabod would never be used over your life and your destiny. No. And I have taught you that everywhere you see greatness, respect it. When you see greatness, especially when you have access to it, respect it. If I have the honor of meeting any of our fathers of faith, the short time for discussion, that is not the time to start making any contributions. No. It doesn't mean I'm a dummy. There are things I know. But then I keep quiet because there are many things I do not know. And you use the opportunity and ask questions. Many of you would have been wiser if you did not waste your time. Have you seen people who come for counseling? And for 15 minutes they are teaching you. They sit down and say, well, I want to tell, there's a way God works with me. So here's how it works. Eh? Every time, January, February, he speaks to me. So God told me, and so you are, why are you here? You are wasting my time. You are wasting the time of other people. If you are not here to listen and learn. And meanwhile, while they are saying all that thing, you have x-rayed them by the spirit. You have found them wanting on many grounds. And yet they will not listen. Then at the end, they say, well, I just felt it in my spirit. It always comes once in a while to agree with me. Agree with you, leave this place. You are not ready to receive. Not ready to receive. You are in trouble. You are owing. You are in debt. You are confused. You are oppressed and you are saying agree with you. What is there to agree about? Koinonia, are you learning? Arrival mentality. Always give yourself to continuous learning. First Timothy chapter 4, 15 and 16. First Timothy 4, 15 and 16. Meditate upon these things, the Bible says. Give yourself wholly, not half-heartedly, wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all. Verse 16. Take heed unto yourself and to doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you shall save both yourself and them that hear you. May I never get to a point as a man of God where I feel I've arrived. I've known all the mysteries. I've known everything it takes. No. 
the victor's path, the champion's path is the path of continuous learning. Don't just learn from fathers. Don't just learn from contemporaries. Also learn when it has to do with knowledge. Nobody has monopoly of it. Did you hear what I'm saying? Nobody has monopoly of knowledge. There are things only fathers can teach. There are things it is those under you. One day you will be listening to a, a program, something from someone, perhaps someone you raised, and you will hear the person communicate a dimension of truth in an interesting way. And that becomes what ushers you to study. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Number three. Why is greatness short-lived? Why is there no longevity of impact in the life of many? Are you ready for number three? Distractions and compromises. Distractions and compromises. Galatians 5, 7 to 9. Distractions. Ye did run well. Galatians 5, 7. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Ye did run well. It's a question. He's saying you started well. What happened now that has hindered you from remaining? Verse 8. It says, this persuasion cometh not from him who calls you. That means you have something has happened to you. This is not how you started. You have exposed yourself to another influence. The last verse. A little leaven, leaveneth the whole lump. Do you know what he's saying? The character of Satan is that all he needs is to introduce something small. The leaven, what do they call leaven in our day's day? Yeast. Thank you. You don't put the yeast the same size as the flour. But you just put it as little as it is and watch the wonder it will cause the entire dough to rise. That's what he's saying there. A little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. Distractions. Philippians chapter 3, please. 13 to 15. Brethren, Paul is speaking. I count myself, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, hallelujah, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. 14. I press. Someone say, I press. Let your destiny hear you. Say, I press. I press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 15. Let us therefore, he says, as many as are matured, be thus minded. You must have a mentality that you must press. No distraction. There are two dimensions to distractions. Number one, getting into areas beyond the scope of your grace is why great people go down. The first part of distraction is getting into areas beyond the scope of your grace. Ephesians 4 verse 7. A painful lesson in that area was learned in the life of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was not a marriage counselor. He did not even marry himself. Instead of him to keep quiet, he had served God faithfully. The greatest of all prophets, provided he was within the area of his grace, no power could touch him. But when he veered off, and now started talking about matters beyond the scope of his grace. His head went for it. The Bible says, but unto every one of us, listen, is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. There are men of God, there are business people, there are great people today whose downfall started. Not necessarily because of anything they did wrong, but they veered off and began to communicate along areas where grace was not given. Are we together? Yeah. This is very important. Distraction. So God gives people mandates. I'm not just talking in ministry. God gives people assignments. And chances are excellent. You see, the deception of greatness is because once grace is on you, whatever you are doing becomes so easy. You will think every other area will be like that. It is the grace of God on you 
that makes what you are doing easy. And then chances are excellent that people will now veer off into other areas where grace was not supplied. And they want to command the same authority. That's what gets them into trouble. There are people who have no business doing detailed teachings on finances. They don't have the grace. They could share it generally or learn from those who really have it. There are people who understand very little perhaps about the dynamics of prayer. One of the, the major trouble in the body of Christ today is because everybody believes he has authority to teach on everything. So people stand, I can teach excellently well in an area and you will be surprised at the rubbish I will teach in another area. The ability to discern your area of grace and stay there with all humility, it profits you and then it profits the body. Are we together? No matter how much I teach on relationship and family and whatever, I will never understand marriage and relationship like a woman like mommy um, Funke Adejimo and then my dear friend and brother Pastor Kingsley and his wife. It's a grace God gave them. By the time you now feel I can do it, I can do all things. You see, that statement is within the will of God. Are, are, are we learning now? Most times, that calamity graduates from pride. It starts from pride and then we delve into areas and we claim to be authorities in areas and we come up with misleading information. When you function within the area of grace, the grace given to you insists that you remain accurate within that area. Hallelujah. There are people who get up and make expensive risks in their lives that ruin their ministries. They just get up and produce posters, healing meetings. They go online and copy the poster that Benny Hinn used to advertise his, his meeting. Healing meeting. Expect this and that. And they stand and shout and vow if anybody lives here sick, except I'm not a man of God. And the sick people say, wow, this is wonderful. We're in a good place then. At the end of the grace, after praying for, if you are healed, come out. Nobody comes out. You sing praise and worship. I mean, just check. Nobody, should they lie? They were not healed. If you are learning, that's all right. If you are starting, but where you claim to be an authority in healing and power. No, sir. No, sir. It's not there, period. Are we together? Many people claim things they don't have grace to defend. Distractions. Can I tell you? Be comfortable where God has kept you and serve with excellence. Never be intimidated. You are only a king within your kingdom. Don't enter another person's kingdom and fight the throne. No. In your kingdom, there is a throne for you. There is a seat for you. There is a crown for you. There is a scepter for you. Remain there. And then respect other kingdoms that you do not have access to. Hallelujah. A gentleman with, with now just, just jokingly, I believe a nice young gentleman, he sent me a text and said, Apostle, I want you to impart grace upon me. I, wanted, I was wondering, how does that happen? He said, I want to be able to raise a song and sing. And I said, my, you know, I, I, I think I just re replied him a scripture. Let every man abide in his calling. I said, this guy is going to frustrate himself now. You will write a number of songs and not know which one to raise. Because it's not about having songs. This thing is of the spirit. There is a grace. There are people who try to sing and you know you're saying, what, why now? You would have just done whatever you are doing. Hallelujah. And then there are many, many worshippers who now try to preach too. And they sing beautifully and then they say, okay, let me share something. And you're like, ah, why did you do that? You would have just stayed where God called you. Why did you now scatter everything again? This thing is about grace. Oh, if it is not on this, your head is not there. It's as simple as that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Distraction. So the first area of distraction is not, is getting into areas beyond the scope of your grace. You must be careful. 
God never sends a man to do everything. God never empowers a man to do everything. There is what men like Watchman Nee will call the limitation of the body. Your heart is responsible for pumping blood, but your heart is not your brain. You can have a healthy heart and have something called brain damage. You will see act like a fool, even though your heart is empty. Am I right on that? Your heart may have a problem and your brain is still working well. You will not even just act like a fool, you will die immediately. So the various parts of your body have their function. And the reason why the whole organism functions well is because the parts of the body limit themselves. If I need to pick something by mistake, I'm, you know, I'm, my hands are full, I may use my mouth to hold the phone, but the mouth is not designed to carry things. There are times you may need to veer off temporarily because of something you need to do. But the hand is at its best when it is reaching and holding, not walking. If you use the hand to walk, you will frustrate the hand. It was not built to walk. It was built to reach. It was built to hold. Are we together? The second area of distraction and compromises is not protecting your focus or your pursuit. So we're discussing the third reason why people's greatness is short-lived. Distraction and compromises. The A part is getting into areas beyond the current scope of your grace. And then number two, not protecting our focus and pursuits. Acts chapter 6 please from verse 1. If you do not create systems and structures to protect your focus, eventually you will find out that you are doing many things. There are people who are doing many things in ministry, in business, in career, in destiny, and they are honestly not making any progress. As we say, jack of all trades, master of none. Acts 6 verse 1. In those days, watch this now, when the number of the disciples was multiplied. So this problem came as a result of increase, multiplication. There arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Verse 2. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples and said unto them, It is not reason that we should leave. Watch this. Leave the word of God and serve tables. Those are two kinds of ministries. Serving table is not a lesser ministry. The apostles were given the ministry of the word and prayer. And now, because an issue came as a result of the increase, they came and met them and said, listen, come and discuss this issue. Some women have been neglected. There is tribalism going on here. There is all kinds of things going on here. And the apostle said, no. Verse, verse 2 now or 3. We should leave. We shouldn't leave the walk. Don't distract our focus. He says, wherefore? These are the apostles. They were secured enough to say, listen, it's not incompetence. It's that if we find ourselves in an area where grace was not given, we will be distracted and majors will become minors and minors will become majors. He says, wherefore, brethren, look ye among you, seven men, full of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But as for us, verse 4, we will give ourselves continually, say continually, Say continually, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. I like this. Very inspiring. I submit to you with every sense of humility. There are many people, many men of God especially, their trouble started when the church expanded too much. They stopped being preachers and became administrators. Because now, millions and billions are coming into the account. Now, um, international guests are flying from all over. And now, sometimes, we men of God can be so insecure, we don't trust anybody. And we feel, I have to supervise this finance by myself. How much entered there? And before you know it, it's Sunday again. And you come to preach and say, let's just sing whatever comes from God. And you find out you are leaving your assignment because you are attending to things that are not within your area of call. Just because you are heading a vision does not mean you are the one who knows everything. 
you must know your area of grace and give people within the vision room under your supervision to bring out their best. Are we together? There are certain roles in this ministry. If I were the one playing it, I probably would have produced a disaster out of it. Koinonia is not excelling today just because Joshua Selman is a visionary person. It is a composite of many people's intelligence together. Are you getting the point now? Yes, it is true. And if you cannot understand and accept this, you would destroy your organization. It's why most organizations don't last. There are people who set up businesses and allow intelligent people to come and run it. They own the business, but they don't lead the business. They are humble enough to be advised, to be counseled as to how the business should go. But there are people who will sit down and die there and say, no, it is my work God gave me. And before you know it, the vision is not going well because they want to do everything. Imagine if I'm the one who is decorating this stage for you. <laughs> I know you like me because you are hearing me preach. It's because I'm staying in my area of grace. Give me the assignment of fixing this flower and you'll be surprised. My first question is, is it necessary? <laughs> are you in church to see flowers? You see my mindset? So I will remove everything now and say you are not serious. Or I'll tell somebody, put the picture of one big Bible, open it to maybe Psalm 1, leave it there every Sunday. That's what you will see. Because my passion is to make sure you receive the word. What is my business with the flower or the color? No. Put, get this, you know this kind of Bible that looks like cake? This big Bible. Psalm 1. As you enter every Sunday, you will keep seeing it. You love the word, but you are tired of the atmosphere. No creativity. So you step out of the way and allow those God granted grace to do that work. This is why you are celebrating what we are saying today. Are we together? You are a great leader here. Can I tell you? Begin to examine the core area of your call and start raising people who function in every other area that is not around your core assignment so that your life becomes efficient efficient Moses was about to kill himself until God gave him a strategy this guy was counseling people from morning till night Moses would have died a natural he would have just died like that and God told him no 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 Jethro his father-in-law gave him a counsel and said no go and appoint people set up a structure there are major issues that are your business train other people Listen, as a leader, if you are not training people, you are destroying your future. You can't know too much to not need people. You will always need people for as long as you are alive and for as long as your destiny positive is alive. Distractions and compromises. Create structures, create systems that protect your focus. Hallelujah. Create structures. With all due respect, and this is my personal opinion, I don't think a man of God who is really called into ministry should have all the time every, to be everywhere, doing everything. You are in every club. You are in every group. You go and watch football on, on Saturday and then on Sunday morning, quickly before you run to church. And then after that, you are doing this one. You are, you are distracted by so many things. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. It's always said there are those who watch movies, but there are those who are the movie themselves that are being watched. Hallelujah. Many people are busy doing so many things. No. Hallelujah. <laughs> many, many years ago, let me tell you something, it may make you laugh. Somebody was organizing his wedding and he sent me a text that would I mind being his, um, what's that man that stands near? I said, are you okay? My friend, go and look for people. I can pray for you. I can so go and do your thing. He said, will I mind? It's not pride. I just told him, I said, no, 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 no. no. There is an honor that priesthood carries. You think whatever you want to think. It's just the truth. 
Are we together? Yes. If you see me stand by a junction to your house, prizing hot corn by myself and say, Madam, I'm arguing and I'm touching the thing, I'm cleaning, and I say, about this and that, I know you will just laugh, but something will affect you. You will just say, no, it's unnecessary. Not at this level. There are some things that are not pride. It's wisdom to protect your focus. Are we together now? Yes. There are people who God has lifted, but they will go for weddings and you see them dragging souvenir, dragging rice, saying, I have four children. You gave me two. Come on, come on. Man that is in honor and does not know it will perish is like a beast that perisheth. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to protect my focus. There are a few times by the grace of God that you will see me come here. I think it's only maybe once, twice. Usually it's during the graduation of the School of Ministry students. I don't come here to come and check. Have they said the sound well? No. If we're starting ministry, that's fine. But at this level, systems have been created. There are great, loyal, faithful, and gifted people that God has brought in this ministry. And I allow them to do their work while I settle down to bring you the word. Are we together now? Yes. That's why when I come, I sit down quietly. As they are taking the testimonies, I sit down quietly and, and receive. As my precious worship team people are leading worship, I sit down and allow them. Mine is to create the, the, a template for them and it's the assignment to stay with God. Imagine if I was the one giving them songs every week. You will soon be tired. You will know I'm the one giving the songs. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're enjoying their creativity because we give them that autonomy to stay with God. Yours is to teach them to be spiritual and how to receive. Hallelujah. Protect your focus. There are levels in life where not... And I'm saying it to... Down to many, there are certain things at your level. If God has honestly lifted you, there will become distractions. Like washing your car by yourself. You would think it's humility, but there is a way if God has lifted you. That two hours to wash your car or three hours to wash your clothes. You are blessed. Look for somebody, employ somebody, take it to a dry cleaner and have the time to pray and focus on what you should do. It's as simple as that. There are things in my life I will never do again. I can do them, but I will not do them. It's a distraction. Don't copy me if you are starting. I wash my clothes, so I did everything by myself before I started. I'm bringing this balance because sometimes people hear all kinds of things in church. Someone will now go and say, you know what? I've made up my mind. And then before you know it, in one month, especially in this our lovely Abuja, your whole money will go into dry cleaning. If you are learning, say amen. amen. Listen, become comfortable with greatness and create a system to protect it without feeling bad. Are we together? Yes. Great people last because they unclutter their lives. They remove things that are unnecessary and settle with the things that are necessary. Necessary. As busy as I am, I'm busy doing few things that are very necessary and very required. And if you are a good and nice and kind person, God will always send people who help you. Their assignment is to protect your focus and to make your life easier. That's why it's good to be kind and loving. You will always find available people, people you do not even have to pay on their own and by themselves. They will be glad to serve. Number four, let's hurry up. Is someone learning? So number one, why greatness is short-lived is pride. Number two, arrival mentality. Number three, distractions and compromises. And then number four, are you ready? The fourth reason why many great people fall from grace to grass I put here, violating your winning strategy. Violating your winning strategy is the reason why great people fail. 
violating your winning strategy. Either the strategy God gave you or the strategy that was built after years of discipline, sacrifice and investment. Show me a man who violates your winning strategy. You will not last again. This is true for ministry. This is true for business. This is true for every area in life. Violating your winning strategy. Either divinely inspired strategy or strategy that is a composite of many years of pain, sacrifice and wisdom. Can I tell you this? Listen, exploits and victory is always strategy dependent. Exploits and victory is always strategy dependent. See every home that is excelling today. Wonderful children, great spouse, there is a strategy. The moment they begin to violate the strategy, there will be problem. See a student who is excelling academically, returning back with great results. There is a strategy that keeps them producing that result. Are we together? See a bank, a restaurant, even a church. In business, we call it quality control systems. So that you do not veer off to maintain excellence, to maintain delivery. Hallelujah. The question God is asking somebody now is have you kept your winning strategy? When God calls a man into ministry, there is a strategy God, you remember what I taught you? That it is the will of God plus the strategy to bring that will to pass that is equal to victory. If the only thing you have is the will of God and you do not have a strategy given by God, the way that we run Koinonia is a strategy God gave. It's not something that was just invented. But there are aspects of running this ministry, for instance, that is a product of gleaning from the mind of intelligent people who have built organizations that have lasted. No system fails when they respect their winning strategy. Leaders, let me teach you this. Beware of people who come into your vision with their own strategy. No. If it is Goliath you want to bring down, don't assume he will fall by despair. Goliath is a warrior too. You need to stay with God. If it's Jericho you want to bring down, you need to get the strategy from God. And can I tell you, when God gives you a strategy, even when you want to change it, consult him. There is no major decision that happens in this ministry, no matter how intelligent it is, that I will not pray about. After all the data and everything is brought, okay, beautiful, just give me some time. I have to go to God. Father, this is your vision. This is your work. This is what we have. What do you have to say about it? If God is silent, I keep quiet until the day he speaks. Is someone learning now? Don't just celebrate success within your organization. Teach everybody who is part of your organization. Your organization can mean your home. It can mean your church. Teach them why you win. Don't just allow them enjoy that you are winning. Please hear me. Teach your children why you win. Teach them why there is always money in that house. Teach them why the presence of God is always mighty in that house. Don't just allow people come and enjoy success and leave. Teach them why do we win in this ministry? Why do we win in this business? Why has God so elevated this vision? If you teach them, they will preserve it. If you don't, they will lose it. Especially when you are not there. Are we together? So you have children. Listen to my message, redefining inheritance. There are many children whose parents only made them enjoy success. They did not teach them the winning strategy. What did daddy do to become so wealthy? Even though he was not an educated man. Ah, he was a man who understood honor. Now you are giving your son all the millions and billions and not teaching him the law of honor. He will soon lose it. I told you that one of the major inheritance 
that parents give children is their mindset. The first thing to transfer is not money. Transfer your conviction. Violating their winning strategy. Every time we have our workers retreat in this ministry, among the many things we seek to do is to bring a, a new, a renewed orientation. Why has God lifted us this way? Why has God lifted his name in and through our lives this way? And then you help the people. Listen, let me give you a secret. Whether it's in church, whether it's in whatever it is, no matter how gifted people are, if they come to join your vision, let them learn why you win. Don't just absorb people to come with their ideas. If they are not humble to learn why you win, then they can enjoy it from afar. But they should not come and destroy what you are doing. This is what is called the doctrine of Balaam. He makes the presence of God fight you by doing something that compromises on your winning strategy. Let me show you one scripture. Perhaps God is speaking to someone. If the glory that was once upon your life has departed, go back and check. There was something God gave you as a unique formula for your victory. Man of God, there was something God gave you. You see Baba Deboye today in his old age, when he stands, no matter what stage he gets to, he must go down on his knees. It's not a ritual, it's a strategy. It may not apply to you, but it's his way of demonstrating before the nations that God sent me. I am not God myself. He will fly across the globe and you will still see him hold his instrument of worship. And he will kneel down, raise a song or two, worship his God and stand up and teach. And you will see that even in old age, he's fat and flourishing spreading across the globe and another ignorant young man you there are people who have different there are others as soon as they come they turn to the back of their seats and kneel down and pray it's not a ritual there are strategies that god gives people there are things i do before the miracle service there are things i do before every service there are unique covenants that i have with god the moment you forget what keeps power on your head samson the secret to your strength is your hair are we together? David, the secret to your strength is your worship. This is important. It is not enough to understand the anointing God has given you. Understand what keeps it. Understand what builds it. Businessman, there are people who have become billionaires today, not because of some intelligence necessarily, but God gave them a secret. Every time they're about to go and bid for a contract, they may take a day, they will fast, they will roll, they will speak, sing worship. Others will just meet a man of God who speaks to them. That is their winning strategy. It's not a strategy for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. If you see men go from grace to grass, they have violated the strategy God gave them to win. There is what we are doing as a ministry to the glory of God that keeps this ministry rising, you see. And for as long as we walk in keeping with it, for as long as we walk in keeping with it, there is no power in existence, even if it's after 30 years, that will bring this vision down. Let me show you a scripture. Second Chronicles 15, we'll read from verse 12 to 15. Is God helping someone? And they entered into a covenant. Watch this. They entered into what? A covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. 13. That whatsoever, whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death. Whether small or great, whether man or woman. 14. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath. It was beyond a desire. It was a covenant. For they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And the Bible says he was found of them. 
What was the result? And the Lord gave them rest round about. I think it was God's servant Bishop Oedipo who said, when Covenant University started, on the day that they were going to do the commissioning, the dedication, that the Lord told him to lie down flat on the ground and hand over that meeting. With all due respect, I will tell you something. When we were preparing for the Manchester conference, usually we hold a meeting with the workers before the main meeting starts. One of the things we did was as a workforce, all of us got down on our knees and we handed over the conference to God. You are the only one who can change the heart of men. You are the only one who can heal. You are the only one who can deliver. It's a strategy God gave. In all your ways, acknowledge him. So you will see an ordinary mother. She may not have everything, but she has a covenant with God. God will tell her, Mama, pray from 12 to 2 every day without fail. That is your secret. For as long as you do this, you will never beg. The woman may not know much, but once it's 12 on the dot, Mama may be tired, but she remembers that there is a winning strategy. And she's praying. She's done that for 10 years, 20 years. One day, her once forgotten son now becomes a captain in industry. And even when people take his name to Habalis, the Habalis will say, you brought a wrong person. And one day, the mother will say, come, my son. Do you know why you are this great? Oh, I just returned from Harvard. Nonsense. Come, let me show you something. When you were born, God told me you will be great. And God said to make that prophecy come to pass. There are families, their, their winning strategy is that they covenanted with God that any missionary that comes around any area, maybe their village, they must provide a room. Have you seen that kind of thing? Some of your parents did it. And you may not know why the children today, regardless how stubborn they are, God still blesses them. God is a covenant keeping God oh let me tell you the truth hmm. hallelujah praise the name of the Lord yes if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you fine the day I stop men from seeing the Lord it's not that he would judge me it is that the covenant itself was designed to bring you down so if I see people boasting and bragging, it's none of my business. I know what protects the oil on my head. If you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Not every preacher may be comfortable talking like me and being so vulnerable like me. And I respect it. I don't know what covenant God gave them. But as for me, the nations must see Jesus through my life. And I'm not ashamed. It has nothing to do with my reputation or my ego. The results show that I'm not a fool for allowing the nation to see Jesus. Is someone learning? I remember one great businessman, a billionaire businessman. We had the privilege of ministering in a conference together. And then he was talking and we had an opportunity to just share. And he was telling me, he said, listen, there's a sacrifice. There are things I do with God that translates to the things you see including unbelievers they have covenants that they keep do you know that every time you see greatness somebody is doing something somewhere that is not normal that is not natural hallelujah with all due respect i will tell you and i'm saying it sincerely i i say it with every sense of humility one of the secrets behind the mysterious blessing of god upon this ministry was a sacrifice something that happened years ago the Lord gave me an instruction. Didn't have much. He said to empty the account of this ministry. Zero, zero naira. When that happened, of course it was a test. It didn't reach seven days. And God came through in a way. And he had vowed that forever, this ministry will never beg. It's the truth. It's the truth. Hallelujah. So there are people who do not behind, please, if there is anything you must learn today, behind every sustainable result, there are winning strategies. Don't think people just excel like that. No. 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 
with all due respect i will tell you every time i have had the honor of meeting our father in the lord that the geo whether in his office here whether wherever i have almost always met him praying always met him praying he will sit down as old as that man is you would think he's weak and tired service is going on and he's in his office praying praying in tongues for a long time and afterwards he gets up and is ready to come out one declaration there is somebody here this and that and people say amen and you see people return with children as if they stole them and you'll be wondering thinking what happened can i tell you sincerely god honors covenants hallelujah i remember the time i emptied my account like empty everything because i love the lord i said lord this is for you no coercion no manipulation there is nothing that you give me that i will not give you don't just covet people's results there are winning strategies and if god tells you please make sure you keep it how can a global ministry like this be going on break can you imagine right now after the second week of december or thereabout we're having the last koinonia service and that's it go on break till january what if you don't come back <laughs> i'm just saying it is suicidal from from an honest standpoint no man of god does that kind of thing that god has helped you now you want to create sorrow for yourself again but if it's a strategy he gave until he changes it it will not stop how can a ministry this size and has never held this convention with literally millions of followers across the globe you must be a madman to not do that but that is the foolishness of obedience listen i'm speaking to someone you started a business with god and you vowed before god prosper me 50 percent goes for me 50 percent goes for the ministry you did it the first year you became a billionaire immediately now when the holy spirit come, mm, don't disturb me when i said that nigeria was all right okay and you see god respects you he will respect you even at the expense of your rising please go back and find out what is the secret behind any result you are seeing today if it was prayer keep praying if it was fasting keep fasting are we together violating their winning strategies there are things koinonia will always do there are things koinonia will never do never never when we were having the conference let me make reference to it again you can imagine such size of people and god comes to me while praying and he says i want to make a statement there is a, a negative narrative that they've had about the church i want to correct that statement and because of that number one you will not collect offering nor mention money all through the course of that conference how do you pay the bills you have no idea ladies and gentlemen how much was spent for that conference you are wise you use your mind And then a workforce of over 2,000 people, you are to feed them also. Bless the people, return back. No talk of money, no nothing. Yes, sir. It is your work. This is the strategy. It was the violation of strategy that eventually led to the defeat of Israel, the death of Hophni and Phinehas. You know that now? A strategy was given to them to not choose just to use the fork and whatever meat comes out they should take it with contentment but the children said no no way they will use their the thing and push and look for something that is is sumptuous and god was saying i'm warning you now they kept bringing the thing out till they went to die and their father saw them they were violating strategies but because of his heart don't love people too much to leave them die there are times that your compassion can be used by the devil to destroy people. You know how God helped you to stand when the people, especially the people around you, if they are violating the spiritual secrets that make for strength, love them, but correct them in love. That was the mistake of Eli. 
there would never have been a mention of Ichabod. He would have called those boys to say, listen, my dear sons, I'm a judge in Israel now for 30 something years, getting to 40. My secret with God was A, B, C, D. Why did God jump Eli's sons and went to Samuel? Because I'm sure God gave them a grace period and saw that these boys were not interested in repentance, conversion, nor his program. If you never believe that God collects the bishopric of people, you have not read your Bible well. Just because God used you yesterday, man of God, it doesn't mean he will use you tomorrow. No. Hallelujah. Your winning strategy. For someone, your life was built on sacrifice. Don't stop it. Because you have now become great. Don't stop it. Your life was built on prayer. Your life was built on the word. There are some of you, you have a covenant with God. Every time it is two or three days to your birthday, you go for a retreat. Now that you are a big man, make sure people do not distract you. When it's your birthday, they will say, um, they slaughtered chicken or cow. Will you die if you don't eat it? They should eat it on your behalf with love. After you meet with God, or they should, re they should refrigerate it for you. You will eat it after the retreat. You go back to your God and your maker. Lord, I am here again. I started meeting with you when I was 18 years. I am now 50 years. And God will say, you are still coming. Yes, sir. I'm still here. I have given you global visibility. You are still here. Yes, sir. And God says, let's go to the next level. Listen to me. If you don't keep this principle, there are consecrations and covenants that protect anointings and protect impact. Every time you see glory turning to shame, somebody has left his covenant with God and men can distract you. You can forget your winning formula. John G. Lake was crying. A. A. Allen, amen? Was crying for the healing anointing. He said, God, how, what does it take to carry the healing anointing? He went inside the room. He looked at his wife and said, Honey, you will not see me again for the next one week. Don't feel bad. I, I will not come out until God speaks to me. He entered and shut the door and prayed and cried. And God gave him seven secrets. He said, If you keep this secret, there is no sickness you will not heal. He came out rejoicing and told his wife, I found it. When you see men do the things that they do, I remember, truthfully speaking, those days when I would see men of God, park stadiums, park meetings, it, it looked to me as if, as, how, do, it, how do these guys get people to even hear them? I mean, in my naive, do, is it publicity they use? What does it take for people to come and crowd themselves like this? Abba! Until I found out that the secret behind every glory bar are many covenants and many consecrations. There is someone God is calling you today and saying there was something you did that you never lacked. Anytime your money is about to finish, God will wake somebody. But now you are literally begging. You are a shadow of your yesterday. Return back to your covenants. There is a winning secret God gave you. I'm telling you this as a prophetic word. God is saying return back. Return back to the covenants. There are people who were once powerful. They are no longer powerful. No. Zero power. It's gone. Worship people. Some of you, the secret behind your receiving songs was to lock yourself at least a few minutes, a few hours in a week. That's your time with God. You carry your keyboard or your, your guitar and you lie down before the Lord and cry. Make sure as God lifts you, you don't just say I'm a popular person. You will write a song that is so nice and nobody will listen to it because the presence factor is missing. Who am I speaking to? Someone needs to repent. God is showing you this is why your glory has gone down. This is why your glory has gone down. 
This is why the glory of your ministry has gone down. This is why your impact has gone down. Once the presence factor is missing, once the winning formula is missing, There are things you must keep doing to keep seeing the glory. There are things you must keep doing to keep seeing the glory. Hallelujah. At the beginning of every year, without fail, there are things I do. There are things I do by the Spirit. There are things I do by the Spirit. Maybe there are only a few times I enter every new year from an old year praying in tongues. It's tongues that transits from 12 to that new year. There are, if for any reason I have missed it, maybe it's not once, maybe I was in a meeting until the next year came. New year, 31st to 1st, no, you can't be playing. As soon as that year lands, I'm commanding January already. I'm commanding February. Because in this ministry, by 6, 31st of December, 6 p.m. on the dot, West African time, the prophetic word for the next year comes. So once we go on break, as we are enjoying break, me, I'm not doing break. I'm waiting before God to say, what is the, 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 the leading for the next year? And before the 30th or 28th to 30th, there must be. Now, there are people who don't believe in prophetic words. That's all right. I respect whatever revelation. But this is how God has guided us. When he said it was a year of open doors this year, we believed him. And the results have spoken for themselves. Hallelujah. It's in this kind of atmosphere. I lie down in his presence. Shabbat katabata. Lord, there are millions of people depending on this direction. What are you saying, oh God? What are you saying, oh God? Turn the plates upside down. You are signing your register for the relevance of the next season. Just because you are relevant now, I tell you, believe this, does not mean you will remain relevant. I have seen people with all humility rise at the cutting edge of ministry, at the cutting edge of business. You would never imagine, with all due respect, there are musicians today, worshippers today. You almost don't know where they are again. Please, everybody go back and ask the Lord, what is the secret behind the glory that you have placed on my life? There are many men of God here. Don't just be allowing people clap for you and say, ah, you are a powerful man of God. You are joking. You are just two years in ministry and you are bragging. You don't know the challenges and the, and the mountains. Even those who are standing, they were shaken. Talk less of you that is already shaking without a wind. Take away that pride and sit down and say, Lord, what is the formula you are giving me? There is a covenant I have with God. It is impossible for me to lack what to preach on Sunday. It's not just because of study. I tell you this. It is a covenant with God. There are things I do with God. What he wants the people to hear on Sunday must be there on time. If you think it is easy, go and be preparing six messages every week. You will be tired one day. You will preach everything you know and you'll be tired but not when you are standing on this. I have a covenant with God. Provided I am standing doing ministry, I will never ever break down. Maybe when I am done, I can sit down and rest. But when that anointing is on me, I can stand and preach till the next day. If I were pretending this bar, I would have died by now. Believe me. When you see extraordinary results, I'm teaching you something. There is a covenant with God that this ministry will never beg and never borrow till Jesus comes. This is not about prosperity. Oh, this, no, 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 no. 
Is someone learning? In one minute, I'd like you to raise a cry from heaven and say, Father, grace upon my life. Where have I thrown away my winning formula? You gave it to me in the secret. This is what made me a millionaire. You gave it to me in the secret and I conquered the financial realm. Right now, my world is shaking. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Shake Parakosiata. Where you have violated your winning strategy. Behind the exploits of men in the spirit. Behind the exploits of men in destiny. There are secrets. There are covenants. Take a minute to pray. Skata prakata balakata bos. Skata balanta paka sopra kata balakos yata. For in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Never forget this secret. If you do not want to answer the name Ikabod in your lifetime, find out the secrets behind your glory. And protect it sit down number five are you ready hmm. I sense that there's going to be a mighty impartation I tell you God is God is shaking someone from the core of your spirit there is a man of God you came here to hear this thing this thing I just said God is telling you this is it I've answered you I've answered you already I've answered you this is what you left and with it the glory went this is it Le Levitical chapter 9 and verse 6 and the Lord said unto Moses this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you You want to see the power of God? You want to walk in signs and wonders? No. There are things if you do not understand, it will remain like a movie. This thing is not magic. Not everybody is fake. No. Hallelujah. Number five, let's hurry up. These two points, there are two points remaining. And please, I want you to pay attention, especially for those watching online. I want you to listen right now. If you think the fourth point was powerful, wait till you hear what I'm about to say. Number five. The fifth reason why greatness is short-lived and why people's glory turns to shame is called unaddressed weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Unaddressed weaknesses and vulnerabilities if you can't spell it ask your neighbor unaddressed weaknesses and vulnerabilities i will not forget lord your benefits i will not forget lord your benefits let me not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. Unaddressed weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Write it and please listen. If you are a great man here, whether you are in ministry especially, please, I want you to listen to me. I have something to tell you. Unaddressed weaknesses and vulnerabilities. I preached a message many years ago while revivals die. I'm a student of revivals. I'm a student of awakenings. 
I have studied revivals across continents. I have had the honor of meeting a few people who spearheaded prophetic moves of God. And I began a study first for myself and then as a contribution to the body of Christ. Why do revivals die without achieving their purpose? Why do we have mighty moves of God and then eventually everything goes down? And at the end of my research, I found only one reason why revivals die. It's called the humanity of men. The fact that the vessels that spearhead that revival are humans, it is the reason why the revival dies. Listen to this. I heard a man of God say this years ago, that any weakness unaddressed will eventually destroy you. It is not weaknesses and vulnerabilities that destroy men. It is weaknesses and vulnerabilities that are unaddressed. Hallelujah. Can I tell you the truth? Every man born of a woman has weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities means there are things you are easily given to. And it does not necessarily have to be sinful. It's just that it can be used against you. Are we together? Yes. There are many, many people, their own vulnerability is lost. Now, it has nothing to do with whether you are good or bad. Lost. Women, men, or both. Lost. There are people who don't have that weakness, but money, they can pray in tongues from morning till night, but let them hear the sound of money. And the old man has come alive. You will thank me for what you are hearing. There are people, their weakness is anger and offense. If the devil wants to destroy them, one thing triggers anger and offense. They can boil even as men of God. They can boil even as whatever it is. And as I'm praying, any spirit of anger here that has trapped anyone's life, in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave you now. I call that spirit by name and I command it to leave you now. Listen, our miracle service has started though. This one is, is not till next week again. Sit down. Listen, there are people, their weakness is an increase. What did I write here? Their weakness is an obsession for recognition. It's a weakness. An obsession. Even if it's the devil that calls their name and ushers them, they are happy. It's a weakness. Listen to me. Do you know how the spirit of seduction works? The character of seduction is that that temptation has no power over you until it can connect with something that is already within you. If Jesus is not hungry, telling him turn these stones to bread will be a useless temptation because it, there is nothing within him that can relate to that. Are we together now? One of the ways that spirits manipulate men, watch this. One of the ways that people become victims of spirits is they are called trigger points in the spirit. So when the devil wants to come into a family, they study the couple or they study the children. What is the weakness that becomes a gateway into this family? If it is lost, they will position a way of entering it. If it's money, they will do something to crash the finances so that in that state of desperation, you see that? If it's obsession for recognition, Satan will make the husband to dishonor the wife, the wife to dishonor the husband, or the children. All this joining of heads you see in homes is a devil. Oh, he's only looking for an entrance point. Please listen to me. Weaknesses and vulnerabilities don't care whether you're a man of God, don't care whether you're a businessman, don't care whether you are a child. Don't care whether you are educated. If you become honest with yourself and deal with them, you have found your key to remaining. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Watch this. Let us lay aside every word and the sin. That means not everything that this sin is not the only thing that destroys you. For those who think it's only sin, no, there are weights, weaknesses, vulnerabilities. There are people because of your obsession for, for money, the devil can program somebody who is very rich but devilish. That's how you see people destroying the glory of people because they are so they have a weakness and do you know what weaknesses and vulnerabilities do not necessarily have to bring any profit for you before you pursue them there are people today who drink and it's not that it brings any satisfaction is that they just found themselves bound by it you don't like what i'm saying listen no weaknesses and vulnerability among the many things you must know about yourself is what can bring you down so that it becomes your prayer point did you hear what i said you must find out what can bring you down and start crying before the lord roll like a madman and say lord help me before i destroy my destiny there are people today the cancer that can bring them down is offense so every time the devil wants to cause problem, he will make them to not be recognized in a place or create something. And they say, me, me, politicians. That's how they get into trouble. Hallelujah. One of the biggest deception of Satan is this false idea of holiness where people actually believe that because they've not gotten into any trouble, they are free moral trouble economic trouble and when it has to do with weaknesses bar nobody has the right to point hands at everybody everybody lies down before god you would have looked at the young boy david in that boy was a murderer would you have believed that in that fine young man ladies that's the kind of man you would have want to marry yet if if i told you you are about to marry a murderer you would not believe it david for you just because people have not acted out they are lost does not mean they are free from it somebody who does not have god forbid me even if it's one billion and they call things they don't know anything about instead of them to say mercy oh god one billion i will not leave jesus for it and then you are not paid salary for three months and by yourself you start scrolling your phone you call x everything y everything said everything in, in search for who will give you money and you will not know when you find yourself lying with a medical condition sorry i just have this thing there's one pain i can't explain i need four hundred thousand for the pain who is treating you like that send me the money and at the end of it you say ah look anytime you feel you are standing you are already on your way going down the only reason why we stand, I'm telling you, is by the mercy of God. And the earlier you accept this bar, the better for you. There are many arrogant people who have made noise like this to their detriment. And today they have become a disaster to the nations. Vulnerabilities. An obsession for fame. There are people who love the Lord, oh, but this obsession for fame, they would do anything to promote themselves to be famous. It is your assignment to be honest with yourself. What are my vulnerabilities? Now that there's no money in many places, that's when you will know people's vulnerabilities. How do you know vulnerabilities when trouble comes? There are people who love God, but they can do anything doable. Let your imagination stretch as far as you think I'm saying. Once it will bring money, they are willing to do it. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we together? For a child to arrange to kidnap their parents. Huh? You've heard of people arranging to kidnap their own loved ones. Then they join the people to cry. And after they are done crying, you've heard the story. 
is when they start sharing the money and the thing backfires then eventually someone will say no i didn't take that risk for nothing it is your responsibility under god the moment you attain the state of greatness i taught you there are three groups of people who will always come to you remember our teaching yesterday um last week wicked people let's recap selfish people and ignorant people and you must be aware of these people it is for you to begin to pray lord help me in the name of jesus lord show me mercy many people today have been destroyed perpetually their bishopric has even been taken their relevance has gone hallelujah when i was writing this writing out all of these things there was one one weakness that stood out and the lord told me talk about it it's called offense i want you to listen offense comes with growth and increase offense comes with growth and increase that means the more you grow the more you increase the higher your chance of being offended hallelujah with growth and increase comes the awareness of honor comes the awareness of shame comes the awareness of disappointment comes the awareness of embarrassment there are people who have no business feeling ashamed or pained except because they have risen to a point that is now notable acts chapter 24 and verse 16 acts 24 16 give it to us it says and hearing do i exercise myself is that in your bible to have always a conscience void of offense towards god and towards men it is possible for a man to be in this state void of offense towards god void of offense towards men there are preachers today hating one another there are businessmen today hating one another you trace the story it goes to offense ego ego is such a in fashion today it has become an industry an industry has literally been built around the ego of great men offense Revelation chapter 2, 4 and 5. No, no, no. James 1, my apologies, 19 and 20. James 1, let's hurry up, 19 and 20. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, God is speaking to you now. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Is that in your Bible? Verse 20. For the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. He already told you. No matter how anointed you are, when you allow this cancer of offense to eat into your heart, you will be surprised at the many things that you will do as a result. There are offended preachers, offended businessmen, offended parents, offended spouses. And you see, the pain from offense can be so deep, you can feel it physically. You know how you feel um, like peptic ulcer or something? You literally feel as if they are piercing you with a knife. There are people who cannot sleep. Oh, he did this to me. She did this to me. Offense. This was the issue between Esau and Jacob. The offense was so strong the brothers of Joseph, after they betrayed him, if Joseph was not free of this, do you know what he would have done? He would have probably gathered them one by one and slaughtered them one by one. Number one, for collecting my coat of many colors, putting me in a well and selling me for 30 shekels, I will slaughter all of you one by one. When the brothers discovered that Joseph, that they wanted to kill, was now prime minister, they were afraid. And he says, set the table before them. Let them eat. He said, you meant it for evil. Ah, what's that song? You take what the enemy meant for evil and, and turn it, it for good. good. Turn it for good. Sing it one more time. You take what 
take what the enemy you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good hallelujah if you don't repent from that they will see mentality they will see it's unnecessary your destiny is too expensive to peg yourself with that kind of mundane pursuit are we together offense you need to find your weakness and your vulnerability and obtain grace to deal with it there are preachers when they get angry they can box physically I'm not talking of report you to police by themselves they will box you and beat you what happened you called him Joshua Selman instead of Apostle Joshua Selman that's what warranted that 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 boxing hallelujah there are men if they are if their wife say honey you say you are stupid honey better call me by my name call me daddy It's not for me to dictate what you should do in your home but it's unfortunate easy things that bring offense can I tell you the truth if you know God you will not keep men in your heart if you know God bah, you will not keep men in your heart now don't think to be free from offense is just something you just laugh like that there are people who have been wounded and that wound is so deep it will not jump out overnight but this is where the Holy Spirit comes he brings to your life that balm in Gilead and with that balm healing comes with that balm healing comes is someone learning can I tell you when I see young men in ministry talking about fathers and talking about other people and shouting and carrying a false sense of holiness sometimes i just lay my hand on my chest and i pray a sincere prayer for them i say oh god please help these people you've never held one million never held ten naira, and you are shouting making stupid noise and there are people they have not there are certain circles if god brings you into you have to go back and go and pray a prayer of repentance in case most people have no idea what honor can do most people have no idea what liftings can do i told you last week that is the reason why you see the older people get the less noisier they become they just keep quiet ah this thing this man did this i will kill him oh and the elderly man just says hmm. instead of you to discern what he's saying you are there shouting as a young man Hallelujah. Discern your vulnerabilities. Discern your weaknesses. There are people who cannot see women. There are people who cannot see men. There are people who cannot see pleasure. Once they see a nice car, something in them starts shaking. Who is the owner of this car? I must know the person. Huh? Nice house. There are people who are almost getting arrested right now because they can go and lie down on somebody's car just because they want to claim it. It's not just your desire to have it. Sometimes it is lost. Are we together? Most times offense comes when expectations are disappointed. Sometimes offense comes when your lust is not actualized. Please listen to me, Koinonia. You are hearing this preacher talk to you because... I want you to last. I do not want anybody to receive that statement Ichabod, in their lives. You must obtain grace. Find out what your vulnerabilities are. Pray, flog it, and create systems by grace to protect yourself. There are others your weakness is food. It sounds funny. Food. Gluttony except you don't see food you will misbehave no matter what you are wearing once food comes around 
you lose your di your your uh, uh, dignity, lose your decorum, and you will fight. You are sweating, trying to make sure you get one and get another one. Oh, the remaining the juice, and you 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 become disoriented in the presence of food. You can collect food from children, and you are laughing while you are eating their food. It's lost, gluttony. Are we learning lay your hands on your head don't pray yet just lay your hands on your head I want you to think in one minute what is that one thing if you were Satan what will you use to bring you down start praying over it now what is that one thing please pray sincerely if you were Satan what is that one thing you would use to bring you down be very honest and talk to the Lord Lay your hands on your head and cry. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. I was broke the other day, you may say. I found myself trying to arrange a preacher to come and preach and manipulate members and raise money for me because I need to pay my rent. This issue of finances, Lord help me before it tears me into pieces. Go ahead and pray. Nothing to be ashamed of. This is church. For some of you, your weakness is lying. Once you open your mouth, 80% of what you are saying is not the truth. Even if you swear by the name of the Lord, you are still lying. Pray and say, Lord, help me. I've changed myself and my destiny. Lying on stage as a preacher in the name of Jesus. Exaggerating things and telling lies. For some is pride, full of ourselves. Please go ahead and pray. Don't feel condemned, but pray. There are people today because of money and titles. They are 50 years, but they have said they are 35 years because they must get it by force. People have forged documents today, forged all kinds of, including Christians simply because they are looking for opportunities oh ladies and gentlemen lift your voice and pray ask god to show mercy what's that your rest on me song again find a comfortable key and sing that rest on me song again please pray for one minute Even if it is one more year left for you on earth, you can rubbish everything good you have done simply because you did not address this. Seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, it says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance. Give yourself an assignment if you need to take a day off to cry before God, go and cry before God. You can't lie to God. Roll on the ground and say, Your Majesty, this is me coming before you. I want to last. Help me. Hallelujah. Can I give you the last one? Ichabod, obtaining grace to last. What is the sixth and final reason why many, many people have their greatness short-lived? Are you ready? Loss of passion and fire for God. 
loss of passion and fire for God. This is the final and the greatest reason why people have their greatness short-lived. It may not necessarily be anything wrong as far as whatever they are engaged in is concerned. The problem can be that it is the secret place that is wrong. Ministry is still right. Everything is happening right. Business is still right. Everything is happening right. But you have stopped getting the result. You are preaching with the fire you preached yesterday. But the impact is no longer the same. You are singing the songs you used to sing yesterday. But the impact is no longer the same. You still have the finances you had yesterday. But the impact is not the same. Here is the problem loss of passion and fire for God. 2 Chronicles 26, 5, Uzziah. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. Ladies and gentlemen, my Bible says, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. As long as he sought the Lord. Can I tell you, and I mean this from the depth of my heart. And I don't say it from a standpoint of pride. I can close this Bible for one year and still not lack what to preach. I can rise up from here now. I can jump into a plane and preach in a conference back to back for the next two weeks. And I'll not lack what to say. It is not always about what you are saying. It's about who you are loving. Sometimes what you are saying may not change. But because there is a disconnect between your love life and that of Jesus, what you are saying may be right, but the impact is no longer right. Is someone learning? There are many pastors that stop working with God and they are only working for God. Working for God. Revelation chapter 2, 4 and 5. Loss of passion and fire. Nevertheless, speaking about the church in Ephesus, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. What is his recommendation? Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly. Watch this. And will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. Hallelujah. Can I tell you this? The secret of any man who has remained in this work, this business of thy kingdom come, beyond everything they do, beyond the skill, the talent, is their love for Jesus. Their genuine, passionate love for Jesus. I had a busy schedule all through last week. And when I return, thank God for many of you, and I appreciate your love and concern, you know, sending text messages and say, Apostle, how do you rest? You know, this and that and that. And as much as I appreciate it, I have made a covenant with God and with my life. I am motivated by my love for Jesus. I don't have to do the things I do. On Wednesday now, I'm in Lagos with Pastor Nat, the Oasis Conference, Wednesday, Thursday. From there, I head to Asaba. Friday, Saturday again. Then I'm back on Sunday. Me for you. Love. Say love. There are things only love can make you do. There is a level of growth. It's no longer about money. It's no longer about fame. All those points have been proven. The only thing that motivates you to continue when every point and every statement has been made is your love. I'd rather die loving him than to live without him. It is true. Hallelujah. You want to know the secret behind the jealousy of God upon the lives of many great people? Find out their love for Jesus. Translated in their service. Translated in their giving. Translated in their living for him. Love for Jesus. I will spend my life and be spent for him because I truly love him. I'm not just serving him. No. If he gives me an instruction today to close Koinonia and stop ministry, I will ask the media to do a video for me before the whole world. I will say, oh world, 
you know how much I've served God and how much I love you people. But right now, the one who was with me when you did not know me has given me an instruction. And that's the end of it. Do you love him that much? <laughs> the proof that you love him is what you can lay down for him. Love is not talk. I love you. I love you. Our world has disregarded that statement called love. When we say love now, it means many things to people to a point that it does not hold any value again. Can I tell you, the real proof of love is what you can lay down. Not what you can say. Greater love had no man than this, than a man laid down. Hallelujah. For some of us, we have given all. We laid down everything. Everything for him. Everything. And anything he ever gives us, he only gave us as stewards. It belongs to him. It truly belongs to him. The stage belongs to him. The mic belongs to him. The people belong to him. The wisdom belongs to him. The power belongs to him. The influence belongs to him. Koinonia Global belongs to him. May nobody in this ministry, beginning from me, ever take the place of God. Say amen. May nobody ever get to a point where we push God out and say, I am the one. No, may it not happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now listen to this. Every great person who desires to last in today's world must have these three things. We're wrapping up. I just thought to add this. In my preparing this note, it, it came strongly to my spirit to just bring this as my concluding words. Every great person who desires to last in today's world must have the following. Number one, prophetic intercessors who hold you up in prayer. If you want to last in this end time, especially in light of the evil that is in our world, you must have prophetic intercessors who lift you up before God. 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 and 2. Let's hurry up. 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 and 2. Finally, brethren, pray for us. We are anointed people. We are apostles, but pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it's with you. Verse 2. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Why? For all men have not faith. Pray for us. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8 says, Be sober, it says. Be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a project in the kingdom of darkness that is only for great men. Did you hear what I said? There is a project in the kingdom of darkness for all men. But there is a project in the kingdom of darkness. Once you are not great, you have not attained a level of greatness in destiny or in the spirit. Those spirits have no business looking for you. It's like a monitor system in the spirit. The moment you hit a certain threshold of greatness and kingdom influence, certain weapons are fashioned against you. At that point, it is not enough to know how to pray for yourself. You must have an army of people. And can I tell you, any great man you love, great preacher, great businessman, the greatest way to show them love is not just giving money. The greatest way to show them love is to lift them before God. When people tell me they are praying for me, I know some are just talking. But when I, I know and discern that some mean what they are saying, I appreciate it beyond anything. You must have an army of prophetic intercessors who uphold you in prayer. Number two, you want to survive these last days? And to be able to have longevity of impact, you must have a system of accountability. Write it down, please. A system of accountability 
for correction, for advice, for counsel, for guidance, and to speak over you prophetically. You want to last? You must have a system of accountability for correction, for advice, for counsel, for guidance, and to speak over you prophetically. Let me give you an advice. Never submit to a man you cannot listen to. Never submit to a man. Never submit to persons. Never submit to any group or any system that you are not committed to listening to. No. That you cannot take correction. You cannot take counsel. You cannot humble yourself to receive prophetic words over. That is not submission. There are many things people call submission in the body of Christ today. It is clear that the graces have not flown to them. The graces have not flowed to them. Do you know why? Because their hearts are not truly connected. It's just a ritual. You must have a system of accountability for correction, for advice, for counsel, for guidance, for prophetic speakings over your life. This is a formula. It has never changed. It will not change. When you see people who rise and last, it is because there is a system within their life. This is very powerful. Can I tell you the truth? The dynamics for excelling in life, are, it, the, 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 the dynamics, the variables are so many. You will need assistance at many points in your life. When you start, you usually will start with a lot of overconfidence. I know what to do. I'm a knight after all. People have recognized me. No. You will need help. You will need help. You will need help. Number three. To last, in addition to prophetic intercessors, a system of accountability. Number three. You must have the gift of godly and faithful friends. I want you to listen. You will never truly be able to survive. These are prophetic survival strategies. The gift of godly, underline godly, and underline faithful. Two words you should never throw away. The gift of godly and faithful friends. Proverbs 18, 24. A man that had friends must show himself friendly and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother can i tell you please look up many of you have been so wounded betrayed injured by friendship once you hear the word friend you don't even want to listen to you you are full especially if you are a great man it's impossible to have become great without the scars of relationships and the rest but don't allow the devil deceive you not everyone is a deceiver there are godly and there are faithful people say amen, amen. There, your assignment is to ask god to help you find them if you find them using your mind you will keep making mistakes only god can bring good people to your life are we together faithful and godly people ecclesiastes 4 9 to 12. many great people are very lonely it is very lonely at the top is the reason why with all due respect you see many great people doing crazy things they are on drugs they take drugs they take all kinds of things because of sheer loneliness they are at a point where everybody is celebrating them. They have all the money. They have all the fame. They have everything, but they don't trust anybody. They don't trust anybody. And so you see that their best friend is their cat. Or their best friend is, is their rabbit. Or whatever it is, whatever. They keep it there and they can even will their inheritance to the rabbit. Because in their mind, is more trusted. If you do not have excuse me if you do not have good people in your life believe me you are in trouble don't just celebrate money in your account you must pray and say God in my lifetime give me the opportunity of tasting of a godly the gift of a godly and a faithful friend Ecclesiastes 4 two are better than one 
because they have a good reward for their labor. 10. For if they fall, watch this, one will lift up his fellow. That is the, the purpose of godly people to help you. These are people you can cry to. You know, I've always, I've always given you this charge. Is there someone in your life today who can pay any price to see that you laugh? Is there someone in your life today that if you call the person and say, listen, I'm about to be taken to the police station, the person will say, where are you? I'm coming with you. Not, anyway, keep me posted. Um, if they do arrest you, I will find out. If I call you and it's not, you don't pick, I know you are in prison. I will be praying. Can I tell you, you have met people who broke your heart. But don't conclude on that. There are people who will stand with you. There are people who will cry with you. Some of you have already been fortunate to find those people. Can I advise you? Swallow your pride and keep them. Don't ever open your mouth and say, I don't need you. Then you say, sorry, later on. Swallow your pride and keep them. Because when you find godly and faithful friends, they are like gold. Don't throw it away. You may not find it again in your lifetime. Believe me. Believe me, great people are lonely at the top because they do not have anybody to talk to. They are afraid of talking to everybody because they are billionaires. They don't know who. And you see, because we are beings of expression, we are beings of emotion. One of the way they punish prisoners, some of the world's, you know, most notorious prisoners, is to take them to a place where they incarcerate them and they have no, they are not in touch with anybody. Imagine being in a place you don't know whether it's morning, you don't know whether it's night, you don't see trees, you don't see plants, you don't see seas, you don't see nobody, you are left alone. And those bold people who can kill people, they begin to cry after days and weeks like children because nobody was designed to stay in isolation. Some of you today are giving up quality relationships because you are looking for money. Quality relationships. God brought the gift of faithful people to your life. But you are throwing them away because the only person you are looking for is the person who can solve your problem. You will rise to the top and find out that it's a lonely place full of deceivers. The top is full of interest. Everybody there is looking for something or trying to protect something. There are few people in your life who will love you as you are. They will see your nonsense and still love you the way you are. When you find such people, hear this advice coming from someone who loves you. Protect them. Swallow your pride and protect them at all costs. There are people today who can carry their salary and give you and say, if this will bring joy to your face, I will do it. There are people today who will sit down and cry with you as a preacher, there are people today who want to know how is the man doing, not the man of God. How is the man doing? I know the man of God is doing well, but how is the man doing? Our world is full of people who just want to take. Most people, when they come to great men, they take. In Hausa, we say, Ale Bakumusamu. Have you heard those kind of things? Aha. Uh -huh. They come to you wanting to pray on everything they can find. May God give you so that we'll get from it too. So most great people are already wounded. They suspect everybody. The moment you come and say, good afternoon, sir. What are you looking for? It is strange to them to care for them. To the point that they are not even interested. Why are you here? Uh, that's my rent again. Oh, yeah, take, go. I, I knew that's why you came. Why else are you here? Oh, demons have been oppressing me. Okay, father, let the demons go away. With all due respect to him of blessed memory, the man called A. A. Allen, I will not say much because I'm speaking on air. The latter part of his life, there were certain things that were not the best expression of finishing strong. And that happened in his life credited to loneliness. Great people can be lonely. It is, it is very lonely at the top, I tell you. Is the reason why you find out that great men can become so silly little children can become their best friends 
they throw away people they can leave somebody to be waiting for hours wanting to see the ceo and the man is playing with his grandson and laughing and you are wondering what is this grandson doing to this man it is because there, there was always a child in him he caged that child to become a champion and now that he's a champion that child is still crying for expression unfortunately everybody there is looking for a great man there's nobody to relate with the child so when he finds a child like him he can now sit on the ground and now play you watch some of these guys in the Middle East watch how most of them spend their money they climb camels and they run around and return back with dust in their body these are millionaires and billionaires and you are saying this is all you do with your money to play around with camels and animals no there was something they gave up to be great and now when they became great since they could not find solace in men they resort to animals among the many things that becomes a blessing to you ladies and gentlemen is the gift of good people there are people today who would not have died if they had good people in their life someone to pray with you someone to cry with you the person can say i don't have all the money but this one tuba of yam i have let's eat it together and give god thanks i am telling you again you may not have too many of these people in your life but if one ever comes around your life look for a psychological treasure chest and put them inside and protect them throw away your pride and protect them are we learning <laughs> ah, like i said yesterday there are some of you who are too innocent to understand what i'm saying you will make reference to this message by next year when certain results would have manifested in your life you will sit down in your office and be crying alone and clean your tears when your workers want to enter sir just to tell you the mail has come and at a point you want to say go away let the money go away have you ever wondered why wealthy people hang themselves does it make sense at least the person would have given you the money bar before dying how does someone who have everything in his life made one day you will see them write a letter and just hang themselves and die what were they looking for that money could not give them what were they looking for that fame could not give them even in the secular there are celebrities today who are struggling with mental health and depression they have everything life can offer their homes are littered with awards many of them get into drugs they get into all kinds of unfathomable practices because of that cry for expression i'm praying for you i'm praying for you koinonia i'm praying for you that if there is anyone here you do not have a sincere person you can call a friend i'm praying for you i don't know how god will do it all but i'm praying for one preacher i'm praying for one mother i'm praying for one businessman I'm praying for someone who has been wounded from childhood till adulthood. May my God, beginning from tonight, may my God bring good people to your life. For someone watching from America, you are watching from, from Europe, you are watching from across Africa. You are saying, Apostle, you just spoke about me. I need the gift of good people. May my God answer your prayer. And for some of you who based on carelessness you threw away some of the best gifts God gave you I'm praying I'm praying for you again some of you threw away God carried treasures and gave you but you threw them away good friends good people some of them it was even your parents some of them it was even your spouse and today they are no more and you are living in regret saying if I knew how important this person was they loved you whether you had money or not they believed in you whether you were famous or not these are people who can come and enter the prison and say go out I will stay I am telling you again if God ever brings such people to your life please open your eyes receive them with sincerity and let them know I've taught you how to maintain relationships if you cannot contribute value contribute gratitude if you cannot contribute value
contribute gratitude hallelujah there are great people here listening to me they know what I'm saying when you are up there it is a lonely path you can be married and still be lonely there are things with all due respect that even your spouse will not understand it's a peculiar situation that is based on where God has kept you you will need the gift of friends most of us have money money cannot talk money cannot say I love you money cannot say I'm praying for you money cannot say I will be there with you Jesus said there is a friend that stick it I mean the Bible says there is a friend that stick it closer than a brother and let me give this one counsel and then we pray never be the reason for somebody else's pain that is not a ministry God gave anybody did you hear what I said never be the reason for anybody's pain do not be the reason for the downfall of any man of God do not be the reason for the crying of anybody it is a wicked way to live don't be the reason why a family is in tears and pain don't be the reason why you join the heads of two friends and stand behind and laugh no we are called to be binders we are called to be peacemakers there are people who are in church the problems in many churches ferment from gossip and the bad ministry of people there are people when they show up anywhere it is trouble did you hear what this one said did you hear what in this company ha ah, look oh i know that i'm the one who knows be careful because you are bringing a curse on yourself there are people today who are the reason behind the trouble of spouses oh have you had this i had your husband said this i had your wife said this they join their heads and they stand and they're smiling there are people today who are the reason behind the pain of good friends there are people today who are the reasons why preachers cannot see eyeball to eyeball they come here they say yes sir they get information here they go there and say yes sir they give information you see there is god is a god of justice and judgment oh you i hear that you want to help this lady please oh let me give you an advice this lady don't help this lady oh i know that her mother is a widow but we heard that this lady used to be a bad girl before but have you found out whether she has repented and the man says really ah that's it she comes by the next day and comes with the same friend gossiping about her and the man says go away and the friend said don't worry all things work together it is because of this pride when the glory departs from men it is because of this an arrival mentality when the glory departs from men it is because of distractions and compromises not staying in your area of grace being a busybody everywhere and not protecting your focus and your call when the glory dis departs from men it is because they have violated their covenant their winning strategy with God what God gave them or the secrets that were behind the mysterious results complacency or anything in between made them to compromise on it number five when the glory departs from men it is because of their weaknesses and vulnerabilities they shrugged it away and carried a false sense of holiness and just felt I am all right just because you are not in trouble yet number six the greatest of all reasons when the glory departs from men it is because their passion and their fire for God even if you are a preacher you can write books on fire and not have fire you can hold conferences on fire and not have fire just because your message had fire yesterday does not mean it has fire now rise up on your feet king of my life you are my all and i live for you alone king of my life you have my all and i live my life for you my heart is yours, my 
for yourself then I speak over you Lord the name Ichabod will never be used in my life go ahead and pray the name Ichabod the name Ichabod it will never be said he was once a great man of God but has been destroyed now it will never be said she was once a vibrant woman of fire someone pray it will never be said he was once a great man it will never be said koinonia was once a cutting edge ministry desired by nations someone pray this is the last spiritual vaccination you are receiving grace to last grace to last preacher pray grace to last in ministry in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray let me make the altar call now the greatest way to live a life of meaning and to last is your passion for Jesus you are in this place and whilst you heard me speak the Holy Ghost told you that you need to restore your relationship or you need to make it right with Jesus the first time now like I will always say you have a choice you can throw away this message and say I don't care we will respect you but I hope your destiny will be able to respect your indecision for Jesus but for as many who want to make it right right now I want to make this call one to five we're out of time i want you to run wherever you are and come and stand right in front of me or across the balcony here within this room don't be silent and don't wait until someone else comes i count one to five run to jesus he's able to give you a new beginning one koinonia celebrate them as they come you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life is changed you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life is changed come three you will never be the same you've if you are coming please hurry up so we finish your life has changed you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life has changed joining them please come quickly all the overflows you can move to your screens your projector stand and just remain there and for those who are online I want you to join you are making Jesus Lord of your life it doesn't matter how long things have been God is able to give you a new beginning now please may I request that you lift your right hand high above your head say this after me Lord Jesus you're joining them please come very quickly I see someone running say Lord Jesus tonight I desire you above anything else and above everything else I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life my Savior and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I am a child of God 
I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Blessed Father, thank you for these precious ones. I'm praying in the name of Jesus that based on the authority of scripture and upon your confession, let the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave be broken over your life. I just saw the anointing coming on one person now. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, you are free every spirit that has held you down. I call it by name and I curse it by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release you right now from every stumbling block, everything that ties you down and I launch you into a season of victory. You go forward ever and backward never. Amen and amen. In Jesus name. Let's celebrate them now. Please all of you just look to my right. You will see a group of counselors waiting to receive you. They will have a word with you very quickly and you'll be back to your seats. Let's honor them in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much. It's been quite a stretch tonight. Please allow me a minute to make the following very important announcements and then we're done. To let you know that next week will be our final miracle service for 2023. So it's going to be an extraordinary time in this place. Not the final service, the final miracle service. Uh, we don't do miracle service in December because we're on break so that people can rest, have their retreats, have their time with family and friends. So our final miracle service to wrap up this year's series of miracle services will be um, next week, Sunday. Make sure you invite everyone within this town and all who are coming in from across other regions and other nations. You're most welcome. Hallelujah. And then the media department, the media and productions department is now open for new members. Um, all those who are interested and want to become part of our media and productions department, please send an application to media at koinoniaglobal.org. Um, they are particularly looking for competent people in the area of visual mixing, video editing, good writing skills, videography, photography, graphic designs, projection, then broadcast and production. I'm told that it ends on Sunday, 26th November. So please um, take advantage of the time. And then all other departments that um, we announced earlier on, I don't know if the doors are closed, but you can go to the PR desk after the grace and find out, get more information. Hallelujah. Uh, remember to come with your prayer request next week and then also come with the requests of your loved ones. Hallelujah. Then by the privilege of God's grace, I want to listen, please. By the privilege of God's grace, we're going to be fasting on Saturday. Everybody as a global family, we're waiting upon the Lord just one day and um, uh, there's no service. So as much as possible, at least children can fast till 12 or 1. Let them fast. They will not die. Children can fast till 12 and then adults stretch it to 6 or at least from 4. You can break 5. The prayer request will be projected Friday night slash saturday morning just look to all our social media platforms the prayer focus will be there let's pray and prepare our hearts to come and receive of god and make sure you invite everyone the sick those who are trusting god for miracles we trust god for a mighty move of his spirit in the name of jesus have you been blessed tonight thank you very much for your patience let's share the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us none forever amen surely god's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen god bless you see you on sunday start liking me can i tell you this when god is silent learn to hear the voice of silence i'm praying tonight everything you have been carrying this is the month to give birth to it your week beginning will experience dimensions of favor you have never experienced